Well, hello and welcome to another lesson from God's Word. I'm glad that you could join me today in this Bible study. And our lesson today is entitled, When We Call Jesus Lord. And we're going to begin in Philippians chapter 2, if you have a Bible. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. If you don't have a Bible hand, handy, it's okay. I'm going to read it to you. Philippians 2, starting in verse 9. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Way back in A.D. 381, that's a long time ago, a fella named Gregory, they called him Gregory the Theologian. He wrote the following about Jesus. I think this is great. Listen to this. He says, Jesus began his earthly ministry by being hungry, and yet he is the bread of life. He ended his ministry by being thirsty, and yet he is the living water. He was weary, and yet he is our rest. Jesus paid tribute, and yet he is the king. He was accused of having a demon, and yet he cast out demons. Jesus wept, and yet he wipes away our tears. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver, and yet redeemed the world. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and yet he is the good shepherd. Jesus died. And yet by his death and resurrection, he destroyed the power of death. Folks, listen to me. There has never been, nor will there ever be, anyone like Jesus. He's the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. He's the lily of the valley. He's the prince of peace. He's the bright and morning star. And so today's lesson is all about him. And more to the point, it's all about what we call him. Think about it. What do we call Jesus? What title do we use? Do we call him friend? I mean, he's certainly that. He is a friend like no other. A friend that would never leave us or forsake us. That's why we sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But I think you would agree that he's more than just a friend, isn't he? Do we call him teacher? And he was certainly that. Nicodemus called him a teacher come from God. And even his enemies had to say, no man ever spoke like this man. Oh, he was most definitely a great teacher, the greatest teacher in all the world. And yet he's much more than that. Do we call him savior? The one the angels proclaimed would come and save his people from their sins. Even Jesus himself said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. But folks, he's even more than a Savior. In the New Testament, Jesus is primarily called Lord. In fact, 430 times in the pages of the New Testament alone, Jesus is designated by the title Lord. The angels announced it. When they said, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Thomas recognized it. When he saw the nail prints in his hands and feet and the tear in his side, he fell down to his knees. And you remember what he said? Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Peter proclaimed it on the day of Pentecost. When he said, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Acts 2 and verse 36. And then in our text that we read a moment ago, Paul makes the case that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so when we call Jesus Lord, we're in harmony with the scripture, aren't we? But sometimes, I got to be honest, sometimes I wonder if we understand really what we're saying. Do we understand the full scope 
of what we're saying when we say Jesus is Lord. Because you see, we're saying a lot. Number one, when we say Jesus is Lord, we're acknowledging his identity. We're acknowledging who he is. And folks, who he is is nothing less than incredible and unique. There is no other like him. When we call Jesus Lord, we are affirming his identity, and his identity is divine. You know what that word means? It means that he's God. That's what we're saying. The early Christians knew that. They knew that the title Lord meant that Jesus was equal with God. They were well aware of the fact that the title Lord was a title used for God in the Old Testament. They knew that. The truth of, of the deity of Christ, his divine nature, is made abundantly clear in several places in the Bible, like Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, where Paul writes, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider, consider it robbery to be equal with God. Now, how can you be in the form of God and equal with God and not be God? And so when we say Jesus is Lord, it means that we believe that he's much more than just a friend or a teacher or even a savior. He's more than just a historical figure who had a following. When we say Jesus is Lord, we're saying he is the everlasting God. He's the one who has no beginning or end. But don't take my word for it. Listen to Jesus himself in Revelation 1 and verse 8. Jesus says of himself, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And so number one, we need to understand that when we say Jesus is Lord, we're affirming who he is. God himself, God the Son, in perfect unity with the Father and the Spirit. Number two, when we say Jesus is Lord, we acknowledge his rights. In other words, as Lord, he has a claim upon our lives. And he has certain rights. He has a right to expect us to follow him and, and to serve him. And there's several reasons why Jesus has the right to be called our Lord. Let me just give you a couple. Number one, he has the right to be our, our Lord because he's our creator. Did you know that? Colossians 1 and verse 16 says of Jesus, For by him, by Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth. All things were created through him and for him. In a chapter devoted entirely to the praises of Jesus, the Son of God, the Hebrew writer, says of Jesus in Hebrews 1.10, You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. And so, folks, when Genesis 1.1 says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, we need to understand that the Son of God was there, the one we call Jesus, and he was taking an active part. And so he has the right to be called our Lord because he's our creator. And something else, he has the right to be called our Lord because he's our redeemer. To redeem means in the biblical sense. It, it means a person who would buy a slave and then set the slave free. The redeemer would be the one who bought the slave and set it free. The redeemed was the slave set free. And that's what Jesus has done for us. See, we were all enslaved by sin. But 1 Peter 1 and verse 18 says, For you know that it was not by perishable things like silver or gold that you were redeemed, but by the precious blood of Christ. And so by his blood, Jesus bought us, and we belong to him. As Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20, you are bought with a price. He bought us with his own blood to redeem us to turn around and set us free from the bondage of sin. And because of that, because of the fact that he's our redeemer, he has the right to be our Lord. And then number three, when we say Jesus is Lord, we acknowledge his commands. 
In other words, if he's truly our Lord, then we're supposed to obey him in everything or else he's not our Lord. We're subject to his laws. We're subject to his commands, much as a child is subject to the rules and guidelines of his or her parents. It's, it's sort of the same way with us and our Lord Jesus Christ. We're subject to his commands. It's like the teenager who had uh, just gotten his driver's permit. And so he asked his dad, his dad happened to be a preacher, by the way. He asked him if, if, if they could discuss the use of the family car. And so his dad took him to the study and he said, well, son, I'm going to make a deal with you. If you bring your grades up and you spend a little bit more time with your Bible study and you get a haircut, then we can talk about it. And so after a month or so, the boy came back to his dad asking again about using the car. And the dad said, well, son, I got to tell you, I'm real proud of you. You brought your grades up. And I know that you spent more time reading your Bible lately, but you still hadn't cut that hair. And his boy said, well, dad, I, I've been thinking about that. You know, Samson had long hair. And Absalom had long hair. And John the Baptist had long hair. Even Jesus had long hair. And quick as a flash, his father said, yes. And they walked everywhere they went. <laughs> and so just as a father might say, as long as you live under my, uh, under my roof, you're going to obey my rules. You, you know, fathers say that, right? Well, in the same way, Jesus has the right to expect us to obey him if we're going to call him Lord. That's why he asked us in Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? You can't truly call him Lord if you're going to ignore his commands. Shortly after joining the Navy, a new recruit asked his officer for a pass so he could attend a wedding. And so the officer gave him a pass, but he informed the, the man, he said, listen, you got to be back on base by 7 p.m. on Sunday. And the recruit said, but you don't understand, sir. I'm in the wedding. And the officer said, no, son, you don't understand. You're in the Navy. <laughs> in the same way, folks, when Jesus is truly our Lord, we are enlisted in his holy army. And that, my friend, takes precedence over everything else. And then finally, number four. When we say Jesus is Lord, we acknowledge his position. In other words, he comes first, period. Jesus gets top billing. He calls the shots. It's like the bumper sticker I saw. If Jesus is your co-pilot, chain seats. Because if Jesus is really the Lord of your life, it means he's the pilot, not you. He sits in the driver's seat. It's his hands on the controls of your life. And it means that serving him takes precedence over everything else. And, and you know the verses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, uh, soul, mind, and strength. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But how often do we allow other things to sort of push Jesus to the back seat of our life? You know, when it came time for the Son of God to be born into the world of men, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, remember? And they looked for a place for Mary to give birth to the Savior and Lord. But the Bible says they had to stay in a dirty stable. Why? Because there was no room found for them in the inn. And in the same way, I wonder how many times Jesus is forced outside of our hearts because there's no room found for him there. I ask you, have you made room for Jesus? Have you given him your heart? Or have you put other things before the one you call Lord? I, I read the following somewhere and I thought it made a good point. And we'll close with this. Listen. You call me master and obey me not. You call me the light and see me not. You call me the way and follow me not. You call me life and desire me not. You call me wise and acknowledge me not. You call me just and fear me not. If I, the Lord, condemn you, blame me not. 
Folks, when we say Jesus is Lord, we're saying a lot, aren't we? Among other things, when we call him Lord, we acknowledge his identity. We acknowledge his rights. We acknowledge his commands and obey him. We acknowledge his position and put him first in everything. And so it's real easy to say the words, oh, yes, Jesus is Lord. And we even sing the song, Jesus is Lord. But can you honestly say you're living it? Can you truly say that Jesus is your Lord? Think about it. Let's pray. Our dearest Father in heaven, we come to you now. And, and Father, we thank you so much for the gift of, of your only son. Father, we thank you so much that he went to that cross and was raised again to, to give us a way to be saved from our sins and to be with you in heaven. And so, Father, we, we acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. And Father, we ask that that You'll help us to truly acknowledge him in, in all the ways that, that he deserves as Lord. Help us to not just say the words, but to live the life of one who truly believes that Jesus is the Lord. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.